Lemon Amiga Presents A Play Diet Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Kid Chaos. This was developed by Magnetic Fields and released by Ocean in 1994. The game begins with some great music and some amazing graphics as well. Some effort has been put into this game as we press that fire button and we check out the options and the first option is to enter a password of which we have not got so the other options are to switch off the music and the sound effects and you can change the jump from fire to up and the whiz which is a bit like sort of the hedgehog you can press fire or pull down and so let's move on to the first level of this game and check this game out. Chaos starts easily enough, but you might be confused as to the layout of the game. You can see 29 flowers are highlighted in the bottom corner, and as I destroy flowers on the level, that will go down. find trampolines which will bounce us into the air and these things are actually checkpoints and there are a few dead ends in the game where we can find some apples and below the flower count we can also see our health which is all the way up to 99 you can't have 100% health in this game but luckily it does count its way up if you leave the health alone and that acts as a shield so if we don't get hit for a while or if we take it easy then we should be able to rest and take care of the health luckily the time is very lenient on these levels Sonic the Hedgehog, it has amazing graphics and in this particular case we can do an amazing jump to get some high flowers which I'll definitely need and for that it helps to rebound a couple of times on these buffers which always remind me of train buffers in a station and if we hit that fire button we can easily gain an extra life. Now let's watch the background as we do a roll and we can see all the layers of background scrolling as we roll along this game. each level we'll get to know our progress and you can see some of the nasties have been killed and half of the flowers have been destroyed. Each 
section of the game comprises of three levels, so let's move on to the second level in World 1. And unfortunately, there aren't too many hidden sections and cut throughs to explore, and at this stage, the path towards success seems fairly linear. All we have to do is to hit those things on target, and the more flowers we collect, the better. <laughs> beginning of the game, a number of things will become apparent, and one of those is the control system, which leaves a little bit to be desired. Another one is the inertia, and bouncing around in this game is definitely something that you'll experience, and it doesn't help with all these buffers bouncing around either, so you'll have to master some kind of restrictive jump, not least because the inertia also has a slip slide effect on our character, and who likes to be slip slid around a level, and it's sometimes really infuriating as you'll find out a little bit later on. But the flower count has reached zero, which means that we can run through all these march hairs and rush all the way towards the exit. Or it should be like that if this was an amazing, fantastic, fun game, but also, it's also quite infuriating sometimes, and having to go back and do things over and over again at this very early stage of the game can get annoying, because you have to time those jumps, but you also have to deal with that inertia. These levels are huge and you'll find bonus areas and things that you can collect. And I think this is just a bonus area, it doesn't lead to much. And we can also collect a shield as well. And that's great, but this is not the way to the exit. And so collecting apples is just a way to restore our health. But you will get a bonus for that. But let's try to backtrack and avoid these bats and rats, of which we shall see a little bit later, can be a menace. Sound effects in this game are varied and you can hear voice beast sampled sound effects as well as the character pulls off various manoeuvres and you can see very inspired by Sonic in this particular case and if we pull back we can do a roll as well. I don't tend to do rolls, I tend to find it hard enough to control the character without rolling it around. And you can see we found an underwater section, and I think this guy loses one point of health for staying in the water a bit too long, and you can also recharge that with a few apples. Would have been nice perhaps to hear level complete or something like that by Andrew Morris checkpoint power up and all the rest of it but unfortunately you don't and there are no power ups in the game all you get is a baseball bat and you have to use that to knock out the enemies so let's move on to the third section of the secret garden aka Alice in Wonderland Overground, underground, ah right, I see this is a wombling free section where we'll have to go over and under the landscape and sometimes you can do that even from the start.
sometimes in this game you might know what you want to do but in this case I knew I wanted to collect that just to see what it did in this case nothing apparent and sometimes you can be fighting against the controls to go for things that you know you want to do and sometimes it's a no way back because the bridges collapse that means you cannot progress down that level and now we get to another notoriously hard bit for me because in this section you can collect some time and you will definitely need that time on this particular level because it has some hard bits and in this section we can collect some extra bits before we venture on to the hard bit and that makes the hard bit slightly easier so timing really does require us to get the momentum right and the momentum in this game is a pain so let's speed up that footage and it really is infuriating sometimes when all you want to do is to climb this particular section but it is possible and if you're on a roll sometimes you can do it first time so that's a life token we're on three lives and i'm not quite sure if we get a life every life token but if we cut through here hopefully we can gain a few more flowers and it even gives us a nice trampoline to get back if we get lost. This path is actually the safest way onto the next section and if you follow that path you'll be virtually unscathed until you get to the checkpoint and then it's bats and rats again and then it's another jumping mechanism and where have we seen spikes before well perhaps Adam's family and many other games but it's very nice textured spike the graphics in this case were all created by Andrew Morris and Andrew is no stranger to creating great graphics and the graphics in this case definitely aren't the problem you can see health already colliding with the bottom of the screen unfortunately that means it's game over and sometimes spikes in this game can be placed in the most awkward areas so if you're gonna make a mistake you're gonna get hit and sometimes it's a two hit death because those spikes really do inflict a lot of damage and here we get to the second difficult section on this level you have to jump over two things to get to the safe area and having done so you can then walk on more or less to the third difficult spot but the second difficult spot is notorious so what I'm probably going to do around this spot is speed it up and hopefully get through this and save you a lot of time watching it and yes at certain parts of this game it can become so infuriating that you make so many mistakes that you die anyway and sometimes even easy platforms can be missed and you can die so the goal of this game is to take it easy and to take it slowly so let's go back to that secret garden and let's check out what we should have done all the way back and the secret garden in this case is pretty difficult we're back through the first difficult area you can see that we're gonna try that again and this time we're gonna try a different approach this time we're gonna try to get more flowers and hopefully somewhere along the line here if you have jumped up on the tallest flowers then you could have gone the above way to complete this level and hopefully the above way is a lot easier than the below way unfortunately for me I destroyed those flowers without jumping up and that means I'm going to have to fall down this hole and falling down rabbit holes in this particular game isn't very easy because if you fall down the wrong one this is not Sonic the Hedgehog it will not hold your hand it will kill you straight away so that means this particular game is not easy if you make a mistake and so let's again go the quick way and let's try to avoid the first difficult section now let's try again with the second one and let's see if we can get any further with it and you can see that this game really doesn't give you any second chances if you destroy those flowers then you're gonna die and if you forget those bats you're gonna die so at certain points the player is best to memorize the levels
definitely the inertia in this game is a sticking point of it and slip sliding off platforms is an easy way to lose that health but here we are again this is the second difficult spot again and i am waiting again for my health to recover because if i slip off this platform that's yet another life over you may notice that i'm down to one life at this point and progressing through the entire game which is massive is made all the more difficult by losing lives constantly on this very first section of the game this is world one section three and what we have to do is to make these jumps perfectly if we do that then at least we can get further than we did before Again, the inertia is a problem, and every time you try to have fun in the game, if you make a mistake, then you'll have to deal with that inertia. Run back for that checkpoint, and let's try again to avoid overshooting every time that we try to jump and run ahead of ourselves. So unlike Sonic, it punishes the player, and in this particular section, you wouldn't believe it, but we've now reached, we've accomplished it, we've now reached the third difficult area on this level. And yes, here we go. At the beginning, we can collect some apples to restore our health, but if you go down that rabbit hole, you'll probably die. So we are going to attempt to do it the easy way, by again jumping over things and going the above way but that is made difficult because you have to do it right from the top of the hill and you have to jump in the perfect spot otherwise you will not make the platform Chaos is about correcting your mistakes and this game really can be time consuming and if you get bored trying to do this the hard way, of which I am, then you can take it the extra hard way which is by all accounts a pit of death and I have managed to get out of this pit of death by jumping but unfortunately I've never managed to successfully complete this level going the hard way. We are still in World 1 everybody, and we're still trying to get off the third stage of World 1. And we are now in the third hardest section. And so let's clear away those flowers and get ready to do the long jump. And unlike sports athletes, we get a number of tries at this, just to make sure that we get it right. flowers are perhaps the most satisfying in the game and the above way is definitely the way to go if you want an easy ride we can take it full steam over these collapsible bridges and get the flowers along the way Congratulations, you've completed World 1. We've managed to get half the destructibles again and 25% of the enemies, but it doesn't really matter about that. The main thing is to get the password, but before we can get the password, we still have to survive another sudden death situation, and this is a bonus feature of the entire game.
Yes, just when you thought nobody else could cover breakout, here's magnetic fields, and you can see poppers in the background, reminding me of cannon fodder. But apart from that, you can see a miraculously coloured landscape, and we can see lots and lots of multiballs ricocheting around this level, and perhaps this is one of the more fun of the bonus games in this particular game. And Key Chaos has about five of them, maybe five or six, and we'll be showing you quite some of those in this review. You can see we gain extra time but we can also lose time and it's pretty easy to collect the wrong ones by mistake if you're not looking what you're collecting. Eventually we managed to get through the ball section and it's always about the final block. Finally we get the passwords and magnetic fields are famous for the funny passwords but not in this case. This is not fields of fire, this is not Liverpool or peaches, this is some unrecognisable password that you couldn't memorise in a billion years. So, having hastily written that down on paper, we move on to the next level, which is only half as fun as the previous one, but it has got some good music in stages. Two, we face some weird creatures, perhaps like a Kate Bush album, and we find the backgrounds, if you keep an eye on the backgrounds as I jump left and right, the parallax actually moves left and right, and that's a crazy feature that most players never even notice, because backgrounds moving left and right in maybe five layers of parallax behind that player is something that most people just don't even notice when they're looking at those enemies. Yes, this would be welcome to the first annoying spot, but I'm not going to spend half an hour trying to do this because I'm not quite sure what's up here. Perhaps it's an extra life. But at this stage, we could do with an extra life, having got here with one. But we're going to skip that out and move to the next section where we find something new, and it's great to find new things in new sections of this game. But spikes are placed awkwardly, so you'll have to watch out for those popping out at the last moment. to level 2, world 2, is simply continuing slowly, and so all I'm doing is continuing very slowly, you're seeing a skeleton running around, a huge skeleton, that's the first and the last time I think that appears in the game, and plink and you'll miss it. is because of that inertia if you don't keep walking forwards you roll backwards and that means it's very difficult so you'll have to master the jumps even more as you face lethal drops of acid in this crazy crazy world and this reminds me a little bit of Psygnosis game and of course yes album covers and things like that <laughs>
find oranges blocking our way and then it's another lethal haul of raindrops as we take another shower and again it's great to see those new elements added and we're actually waiting to try to restore the health and try to time the raindrops. Trying to pull right, but I'm actually moving left, so let's try again. Let's try to aim for the exit and let's try to get off this level, which is just across this bridge, which unfortunately I fell off. World 2 is supposed to be a colourful world and is supposed to be this kind of edgy landscape. But for my money, it's a difficult one, and you will definitely have to have patience, particularly because the checkpoints are way back. So if you make a mistake, you'll have to go way back before you get to where you should be. This being one of the more obscure platform levels out there, World 2 Section 2 really does require patience and you only have enough time to do it so you'll have to collect that time all the way through that level and we've moved up to 1 minute 30 to do it but it probably takes about 5 to get through it so what you'll have to do is to memorise it by entering that password and playing this game a few times and finding where all those extra times are. And again, it's a pity that it doesn't say extra time when you pick up those to remind us of the Lost series. down to 30 odd seconds so we're gonna have to collect something if we want to survive this level and it means that we have to collect all these things and now that we've collected one we now run out of energy and we've died so unfortunately that's the end of the life that's the end of my energy and that's the end of my try on this game but if we type arcade games in as the password a nice easy one to remember then we can check out all the sub games in the game and if we type another password we can also play the levels in order so this is somewhere that I've never actually got to in this game This game is to destroy all the barrels and it may seem quite a pointless task to destroy barrels which have been airdropped from the sky. So if we keep blowing those up then we can keep progressing through them and if you can and you die then you'll have to try that again. Surprisingly difficult level and one of the most difficult sub games in King Chaos.
Next, check out the level itself, and in this level you may find a few things that look a bit familiar. your controls might be reversed and that makes controlling this character virtually impossible and all you can do at that point is stop and again luring you over spikes and not even a moving platform there this is a bit unfair and I have absolutely no idea where I'm going on this level but let's trust in fate let's try to get over here anyway and look at this we enter a pipe system which reminds us again of other games just like Sonic the Hedgehog. to remove the street lights and after you've done that you can activate an elevator but only after you've activated the button which means you have to rush in there at high speed to activate the button and then the elevator but let's move around again this reminds me of super frog and super frog this is a game that has been copied on many games on the amiga Still having no luck with that particular trap, which is simply an elevator, and I think all I have to do is to pull down on the elevator, and that will move down. And look, let's try that, let's flick the switch and try the pull down technique. And let's see if it actually does anything. Well, it's moving, so we can venture on. And in this game, we find teddy bears, which remind me of certain Commodore 64 games by Andrew Morris, and we find Lotuses, of course, and we find machines in the background reminding me of the Chaos Engine with pistons and things like that. And again, the background really won't be important to the player. And cut throughs again reminding us of the great Super Frog. But unfortunately, unlike Super Frog, it just doesn't seem to have that playability. And unlike Super Frog, you can't just wander blindly around the level and make it in this game you have to know where you're going and if you wander around blindly you can find yourself out of luck but this is actually the way to go you have to go through all of these and then all the way backwards again and then once you get onto the bottom row then you can venture on with that level This fantastic level should have gone on as the second world of the game and as a second world feature this wouldn't have gone amiss, leaving the dark and mysterious ones till more or less the end. But if you get through all of that then you have to get through a bonus game and of course this one is Duck Shoot. You may have seen ducks already, well they're not yellow in this one, they're actually white and it's very difficult, very very difficult indeed. To 
the problem of this game is it's overly difficult for its own good and that's what some of the magazine commenters said about this game and magazine comments definitely tend to be a mixed bag at the best of times because some people said this game is superb based on the graphics and the sounds and not many people commented on the dodgy kind of controls with the laggy inertia but back then you just took it for granted that those games had that and I think in Zool you can actually switch that off but let's go through the laborious process of trying to enter the password for the last level and well this is the penultimate level this is level four and this is the techno world and again some of these features may remind you of other games did press fire but the character simply walked off the edge anyway and that's because you have to press fire just before the edge of the ledge otherwise you'll just fall off it quite happily and if you miss you'll have so much inertia you'll just jump over the platform that you're supposed to be aiming for reminding me of game over on the Commodore 64 so inertia in this game is ridiculous at the best of times and this really is a difficult time because this is the very first hard spot on this fourth world and if you think that's hard then the rest is definitely hard as well and so things like this definitely spoil this game because if you've been playing this for a few hours you don't want the worlds to be so hard that they're impossible at this stage You might notice the character can't duck and he can't crawl either and he can't change his weapon and he doesn't have a shield he just has a health and so you can't really do much with this character he doesn't have any speed ups like super frog and for all i know i could actually be running the wrong way on this level but this is definitely a tough game and it doesn't try to take it easy on the player at any stage it anticipates that the player will know which way to go and it anticipates that the player will know what to do Back in the day I only managed to get to the second world and so I never saw any of these sub games and these later levels which was a shame and I think that's the same for most players they tried this realized the controls were a bit dodgy brought the game off and so it's not the controls fault it's simply the inertia and that was built into the game so if this game had been more easier to control and stops on the spot and it was generally more fun in all those great areas then it would have been terrific but it just seems to be copying other games without trying to improve on any of it and this seems to be well in my mind a copy of games which actually did it better so that's probably the reason why nobody bought this game and this was the final game that Magnetic Fields released on the Amiga you can say there's nothing wrong with it but then again if players don't get to see at least half of the game having tried on it and tried on it for hours and hours then it's just too hard and that world 2 really is just too hard and then once you get to world 3 it is punishing so most players won't have seen these levels unless they use the skip password and the invulnerability passwords which I probably did back in the day let's move on to world 5 this is the ruined city 
with probably the best graphics in the game that not many players have got to see and as for the difficulty level that probably equates back to world one again so if you take it really easy perhaps you could do the final level really easily as well My money, Kid Chaos, is a slightly wasted opportunity, and it's a shame that these amazing graphics and these amazing levels go to waste because of the gameplay which punishes the player every time they slip into water, or every time they overshoot or undershoot, and they don't know the level and how he's supposed to memorize these levels. So, there was some missed opportunities here for definite, and that reflected on the scores. And Amiga Power was the lowest score, they gave this 71%. They said the controls were sluggish, and the levels were sprawling and difficult, and the layout of spikes was unfair, and they also said that it was intensely frustrating. The second low score went to Lemon Amiga, who awarded this 74%, Amiga Computing gave it 77, Amiga Format gave it 79, Amiga Games Magazine gave it 82%, Amiga Joker gave it 82%, Amiga Concept gave it 83, and The One Magazine gave it 87%, See Amiga awarded Kid Chaos 87%, Amiga Action gave it 88 and Amiga Dream actually gave it 93% and they said there was a lot here to keep players entertained with super great backgrounds and super great graphics and of course it was made by Magnetic Fields. this game an average score of 8 out of 10 and for playability I'd probably give it a 5 and for longevity perhaps a 4 because there was so much built on the Lotus series that this had to be a letdown and there is no way that this game innovates or pioneers the scene like the Lotus games. So thank you once again for viewing another Lemon Amiga play guide and review and we'll see you again in the next one.